In the Beginning, a bedtime story. Once upon a time, there was a universe. We are not sure how it started or whether there is a reason. We don't know, for example, if space-time is ordered or disordered at the smallest scales, which are dominated by the weirdness of quantum mechanics. We are pretty sure that during the first sliver of a trillionth of a second, it expanded very rapidly, so that for the most part, it looked the same in every direction, and looked the same from every position. It was sameness everywhere, except that particles started to blip out of nothing due to random fluctuations caused by quantum effects, maybe in space-time. We are still not super sure about that. Then again, we are not super sure about this either. For some reason, those particles formed more matter than antimatter. That process, which formed a particle called baryons, is called baryogenesis. From there, those baryons started to form structures, and from those structures, stars formed. Then the stars got old, and some of them died in super epic, rather fabulous fashion. They exploded into supernovae, making heavy elements like carbon and oxygen in the process. Those elements went on to be the basis for all life on Earth. Earth is a planet, one of the structures that formed around stars from leftovers of supernovae. Eventually, a smaller type of structure that we call life formed on Earth. Some of the life forms that evolved were relatively hairless apes that use a variety of methods of communication. There are about 7 billion of these apes, with various levels of eumelanin and pheomelanin in their skin and hair, giving them a range of colors. The apes also have a lot of different hair textures. Some of the ones with less eumelanin have for a long time now been cruel to the ones with more, some of whom we know as black people. We know why this is, although we don't fully understand the why. But it might be due to laziness or because they are jealous of our boogie. But despite this, black lives come from the same baryogenesis, the same supernovae, and the same structure formation. No matter what the lowest eumelanin people say, black lives are star stuff, and black lives matter. All of them. Despite the facts of this story, there's still a lot that we don't know about the universe. In science, we tend not to think in these terms, imagining the subject, us, and object, universe, to be distinct. This way of thinking is something we inherit from European thought, specifically the ideas of René Descartes. When we study the Andromeda galaxy, we record its details as Cartesian thinkers, seeing it as something apart from ourselves and our home in the Milky Way. But at the same time, we are in a very technical sense bound up with Andromeda. It has its own story. It is the Milky Way's nearest major neighbor, and its existence does not trace back to a common origin with the Milky Way. Yet, in the future, these two galaxies will merge because they are bound together in a gravitational potential, which we can think of as a well in which they are both slowly spiraling downward, destined to eventually meet. Don't worry, this collision isn't set to be fully underway for another four billion years, and it won't be the kind of violent chaos that we imagine when we think about the word collision. It isn't two cars smashing into each other quickly and violently. Rather, it is stars and gas and maybe dark matter particles reorganizing themselves into a new formation, guided by their gravitational relationships with one another. This story is maybe our story. I say maybe because around the time that this collision occurs, our sun will be dying and our solar system will be destroyed in its death throes. Before its life ends completely, the sun will expand the amount of space it takes up, changing what constitutes the habitable zone of this solar system before eventually destroying the Earth entirely. By then, we may have self-immolated anyway, but perhaps we will have just relocated to another solar system in a galaxy far, far away, using technology that is completely unimaginable 
and even unbelievable to me now. Or perhaps we will be in a solar system closer by, still in the Milky Way, in which case we will be carried along with the collision. <laughs>